if you're stuck, okay, and you don't have the next idea, or you may have you may have done the washed in version, yeah. but you don't know you don't it hasn't hit you yet what you're gonna do. What do you do to, to unstuck? Well, uh, interesting question. I think that uh, generally I have a pretty very clear idea of what I want to do. You know, so it's a very clear idea of where I want this painting to go. Now I can't tell you exactly, you know, like in this one, can't tell you exactly what that sky is going to be or exactly what the range of color, the contrast is, is going to be, but I know I want a very coherent image. And by coherent, I mean it's very believable, okay? And from just say it's a beach, you know what I mean? People at the beach, and that's a uh, beach umbrella, whatever. Uh, I want it to be very coherent. And for years, I've always liked the idea or, or wanted every inch of the painting to be as important as every other inch, okay? So there's not parts that I focus, I'm careful with, and I slop this side in, okay? But everything and the granularity of the painting, the size of the brush strokes, whether it's the sky or the sand or whatever, is going to be the same when it's finished. It's like the painting, uh, I think it a little of, like it's a charged field. It's a field of energy, and I don't want any vacuums. There's no voids. There's no empty spaces. Everything ne needs, needs to part. Every square inch needs, needs to be attended to and needs to have that attention. And I think that served me very well uh, in, in my painting because I think there's, uh, well, it's like working to a standard. It's like, it's like the painting's not going to be finished until it meets, and they're intuitive ideas, but until the, the entire surface is as worked, you know, there's, there's no empty spaces, there's no voids, so it all has an activity. And I think about like a visual field, like in a visual field, we, we, we don't see backgrounds, we look and we see the tree or we see the car, or we see, you know, whoever, our friend. Uh, but I think in painting somehow to pay more attention to the negative space and the positive space really helps because, because then you're building that, that idea of building a cohesive place, a consistent place. And uh, this started a little bit, well, I've always been engaged with the figure ground idea, but a clear example is the watercolor. And I used to do a lot of land watercolors, landscape watercolors. Uh, but the discipline in watercolor of if there's a leaf that's light, I can't paint the leaf. I've got to paint what's around the leaf. And, and, and so the leaf is light, and I have to make it by putting darker colors around it. Doing that, I make much more interesting leaves than if I just paint the leaves. And, and if I just paint the leaves, there's that danger of getting repetitive and automatic and generalizing, you know, kind of cartooning the leaves or something. But if I'm painting, if I'm painting the negative space around the leaf, the leaf that gets made that way is just a more interesting leaf. It's unexpected and there's sort of a random quality then, as, as there is in nature. You know what I mean? That all the leaves are about the same size and same shape, but each one has nuances. Each one is, is kind of different. So uh, that's my idea.